the interval of convergence. So what values of x work to make this work and, and x falls within that interval? Now I'd like to take a little back, uh, you know, go back to the time machine a little bit and uh, recall the parabola. And let's say that we pick the really easy one, y equals x squared. So if we plot that parabola over here, and uh, it's hard to draw long straight lines with this thing. We plot it like that. And we plot y equals x squared. It looks something like this, right? And it goes back up like this. So that's our parabola. But if we were to plot a little different version of that, if we were to say plot y equals how about x minus h squared, that's going to give us some different parabola, one that maybe is over here. And it'll go to right there. And that is you know, what we call a functional transformation, or a translation in this case. So this point here would be h. So we slid this thing over by h units by subtracting something from this argument of our function. So I hope you're asking yourself, and you should be saying as you watch this YouTube video, uh, can this apply? Uh, so can we shift a power series as well? Or in other words, uh, what if we had something that looks like this? Not in other words, but in mathematical symbols, n equals 0 to infinity. Uh, what if I made it x minus 3 to the end? What happens there? Well, uh, we know that gives me still the first term is still 1 plus x minus 3 plus x minus 3 squared plus dot 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 and here are the common ratio is uh, x minus 3 and we know that needs to be the common ratio needs to be between uh, we need uh, the common ratio to be between negative 1 and 1, so we add 3 to both sides. Uh, so we're going to wind up with 2x and 4. So this is the interval of convergence uh, for this particular power series, right? Because the common ratio is this, and we've got to have it like that. Now, uh, if you're a rigorous mathematician, you're watching from somewhere other than Madison College, or if you're a rigorous mathematician at Madison College, uh, I, I left this a little vague, right? So this could be um, could be uh, I could write this interval as this or this or I guess the other two options would be that or the last option would be this. Right. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time um, talking about convergence at the endpoints. Uh, and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Now, when we do this, when we shift this power series around, um, we say that uh, this sum uh, from n equals 0 to infinity of x minus a to the n. Remember back in algebra we always used h, uh, but now in calculus we use a, uh, is a um, power series series about a. So that's kind of what this thing is called. It's a power series in x but it's centered around A. So for instance, here, lower left-hand corner, uh, I said X minus 3. So I shifted this thing 3 to the right. And surprise, surprise, the interval of convergence 
right, where this thing really matches what I think it will, only goes from uh, 2 to 4. So it's kind of symmetric about this point uh, to which I shifted my power series. Uh, and so the interval of convergence, we say, looks like this. Uh, we'll go from A minus R. This is a big R. Roots, ratios, radius, all this stuff. A plus R. And this big R is called or defined as triple equals defined as the radius of convergence. All right, and this gets really, really uh, complex, and you can study this in advanced calculus classes. Uh, so, that, you know, over here we discovered the radius is 1, right, for geometric series. In constants, we know that um, the common ratio, the absolute value of the common ratio, has to be less than 1. So that leads to the question, uh, is R uh, always 1? All right. Well, what if I had a series that looked like this? N equals, what did I do here, 0 to infinity of one third x to the n, right? So what does that equal? Uh, uh, one plus one third x plus one ninth x squared plus dot dot dot, right? Well, the common ratio uh, here is one third one third x. So I know that that has to fall in here, so that negative one, uh, one third x, and positive one. So that leads me to believe that uh, my interval of convergence is in here somewhere. So if I were to plot this one, my my graphs would overlap from negative three all the way to three. So I'd have a much wider interval of convergence here. Uh, and <clears throat> yeah, so that's um, the sum of this thing. We could say the sum from n equals zero to infinity of one third x to the n equals well that'll be one over one minus uh, essentially x over three, right? And if we do a little shuffling around, this becomes 3 over 3 minus x. So I can represent this function, 3 over 3 minus x, with this series. Only for uh, x's that fall between negative 3 and 3. Okay, so that's kind of the gist of uh, these power series. Now, I think we're at the point where we can insert a um, formal definition now. This is a pretty late formal definition. Sorry, Caroline, but I uh, did a lot. So where is that uh, power series definition? Here we go. Drag that up there. That's as high as I can go. So power series about x equals 0. So if this is centered around 0, like that first example that I plotted in Mathematica, some coefficients times some powers of x. So c0, c0, c1x, c2x squared, cnxn, right that. A power series about x equals a is a series of the form like this, where we subtract an a, same kind of deal, the powers on this x minus a go up. So I've shifted this thing to the right. Um, the center is a <laughs> instead of c, it's a, and the coefficients uh, are constants, one third, one ninth, you know, that kind of thing. Um, now you, you may note the difference here, uh, so we call a um, the sum of 1 over n to some p, right, we call that thing a p-series, and the sum of 
x to the p, or x, or the sum of x to the n, we call that a power series. So don't uh, don't forget, you know, that p stands for power here, just like it does here, except they're slightly different. So uh, keep track of that. All right. Um, now, unfortunately, not all power series are uh, really nicely geometric. Um, not all power series. are geometric, right? For instance, we could have something that looks like this, n equals 1 to infinity of, uh, how about negative 1 to the n, uh, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to shift it over to the left a little bit, x plus 2 to the n, over n. Okay. Well, I, I look at this and it, it's, first of all, it's alternating, but that's okay. We can still have geometric kind of stuff alternating. This is raised to a power. That's fine. But, oh, I put an n down here. It's not something to the n. It's just, just a plain old n. So this is clearly not geometric. So how do I find how to find uh, the interval of convergence? Yep, inter. What happened there? Wow. Go back and get my pen. Interval of convergence. How am I going to find this? Well, let's look to our toolbox, and one that's going to work almost every time is one of the last ones we learned the ratio test. Okay, now um, remember this only works, I'm going to make this a little note in blue. Only works for positive uh, a sub n's, right? So if we have to work with only the positives, if we had an alternating series like this, well, I can only really check for absolute convergence, can't I? But I like absolute convergence because it doesn't leave, uh, it, it seems more powerful, it seems more useful. Uh, so let's take a look at this thing. We know that our row is going to equal, and the algebra here, we're going to skip the negative one part of it because we're testing, we're taking the absolute value. We're testing for absolute convergence. So I'll have x plus 2 to the n plus 1, right, my next term over n plus 1 over, and then what's on the bottom is just x plus 2 to the n over plain old n. And uh, as we usually do, we'll flip this thing. So x plus 2 to the n plus 1, well, that's the same as x plus 2 times x plus 2 to the n over n plus 1 times, flip that guy and multiply, uh, on the top we're going to wind up with an n over x plus 2 to the n. All right, now we get out the all-powerful red pen of canceling. So I can see that this cancels out with this, and uh, that's all I've got, right? So now I'm left with This equals, now remember this is still the limit, and I forgot to write that here, as n goes to infinity, uh, row equals the limit of x plus 2 times um, n over n plus 1. Well, x doesn't really depend on n. Those are different, so I can write this as x plus 2 even if it did, because my limit rules allow this uh, product thing, but it doesn't. Limit as n approaches infinity of n over 
n plus 1, right? Now, I think we all agree that, that this thing is going to n plus 1, right? Now, I think we all agree that, that this thing is going to go to 1, so I'm going to skip, skip the details here that n over n plus 1 will go to 1. So I know that rho, not p, rho, equals simply x plus 2. And um, what do we do from there? Uh, oh, yeah, x plus 2 has got to be between uh, negative 1 and 1. So my interval of convergence here is going to go from negative 3 to x. Ah, not to, what's up? Adding. Got to subtract 2. And so this becomes 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So my interval of convergence for this particular example uh, goes from uh, negative 3 to negative 1. And again, I'm going to uh, neglect the endpoints. I'm going to make a note of that just so I don't get flamed on YouTube. Um, I am neglecting endpoints. Why am I neglecting the endpoints? Some observer might ask. Uh, well, remember I'm an engineer. And what we do with Taylor series is we're trying to look at something. Um, say this is this is a going on a huge sidebar here. Uh, so sidebar. When we look at these things, oftentimes we say we're looking at like a chunk of uh, water, right? And it's a little cubical chunk like this, and say this is uh, x. And this is x plus dx. And then this is, say, there's some pressure over here. And this is pressure plus dp. And what I'll often do is use a Taylor series, uh, which we'll learn about in a couple days, but essentially a power series, um, <clears throat> just to, to estimate, you know, I don't know exactly what the, what the shape is around here. So... I'm going to add, I'm going to take a little tiny bit and come up with a differential equation. And this is on the order of, you know, micrometers or, you know, nanometers or picometers. Well, if, if my, my series converges over this entire range, where's my, you know, my, my series converges over, you know, radius of one, I feel pretty safe working entirely within my radius. I don't need to go all of the endpoints. Um, if that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry, it'll make sense in a few days. But if you're watching this and skeptical of my neglecting the endpoints, well, that's, I'm an engineer, right? I'm not a mathematician. So that's uh, being said. 